Good afternoon, Jets Nation. Welcome to the Drew Jets Show. And your days of seeing the Michael Carter sign jersey are numbered because the New York Jets just cut him. So what does this mean for the Jets? Cue the clip. So the move to release Michael Carter was definitely shocking because of what Michael Carter has kind of done for the New York Jets during his three years here. I mean, has he been a super impactful player? No, but he's just been a player that has been very well liked by the fans. He's been a locker room favorite, a great culture guy for the New York Jets. So it definitely shocked me that they released him. Now, has his play in the field been great? Has it been worthy of a roster spot? Absolutely not. But I definitely thought the New York Jets would at least make him inactive and just give his role to Israel Abacanita or give his role to a different running back and put Israel Abacanita in the offense more, something of that sort, instead of just cutting Michael Carter. But the New York Jets said, screw it. We're cutting Michael Carter. Hope you can find playtime on another team, but it's not going to be on the New York Jets. And I mean, as I said, he hasn't been very good this year. His role for the Jets this season has primarily been our third down running back, and he hasn't really been very good in that role. As a third down running back, you have to protect the quarterback a lot. You don't get very many handoffs. You got to be a threat in the receiving game. And he's made some nice catches, but hasn't really done much in the receiving game. He's been a horrible pass protector. And on the very little handoffs he's had, just really hasn't been that great. Along with having a good bit of drops, a good bit of penalties, Michael Carter just basically has been unplayable for the New York Jets these past few weeks. It's been a big reason why the offense hasn't been performing that well. The New York Jets realized this and just decided to get rid of Michael Carter. And it sucks that the Michael Carter story has to end like this because his rookie season was very promising. He averaged 4.3 yards per attempt. He had 936 total scrimmage yards. I mean, it was just a great sight for Michael Carter. We finally thought we had ourselves a great fourth round steal in MC, but his second year was terrible and his third year has also been terrible. And once again, it just made sense to get rid of Michael Carter. But what does this mean for the New York Jets offense? Well, it finally means Israel Abacanita is going to be getting some playing time. How much we're going to see Israel Abacanita on the field, I don't know, but I'm excited for whenever he does see playing time because Rookie speedy running backs have been dominating this year. Devin A. Chain, Keita Mitchell, both of those guys have been absolutely balling this season. So it makes me excited of the potential of Israel Abikanid, especially after how he looked in the preseason and how he looked during training camp. So very excited to see what Israel Abikanid is going to do for this Jets offense. Robin Sala also said earlier in the week that some personnel changes were coming for this Jets offense. I didn't really take him too seriously just because that's something a lot of coaches say, but Michael Carter getting cut definitely sent a message. It said that the Jets are 100% making some personnel changes, and when the offense takes the field on Sunday, don't be surprised if Jason Brown leads a starting wide receiver and Jeremy Ruckert's taking more snaps than CJ Uzama. Now, obviously, I don't think Jason Brownlee is going to be a starting wide receiver, but we could see him get some snaps and kind of slowly move Alan Lazard out the lineup. Those are the type of personnel changes Robert Sal is kind of talking about. Also, one of them could be giving Dalvin Cook more snaps. He's been requesting more snaps from the New York Jets after they did not trade him. And last week against the Raiders, he looked pretty good. Had four carries for 26 yards. Dalvin Cook was cooking. So it's just exciting to see what this Jets offense is going to do now that they're actually taking these personnel changes serious. Also wonder if the New York Jets also add that players only meeting on offense that Garrett Wilson talked about and said that they could potentially have. We'll be interested to see if they had that or not. But nonetheless, interesting to see what this Jets offense looks like on Sunday without Michael Carter. But what are you guys' thoughts on the Michael Carter cut? Comment it down below, but I'm your host, Jet, signing off for now. See you guys later. Peace.